Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. It's going to be a great show today. My guest is Dr. Kip Lucas Savage. We're going to talk about how to acclimate cattle when you wean them or when you get them into the feed yard. Some of the things that you can do to help gain trust and get those cattle to respond to you so that they're healthier and they perform better. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life, it's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed captioning brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment brought to you by the new Hired Hand Portable Cow Sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey, folks. Welcome to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Kip Lucasavich. And, and Dr. Kip, thank you for taking the time to be on the show. Oh, absolutely. It's always a pleasure, Dr. Dan. Dr. Kip is a veterinarian, a feedlot consultant. He does so much with design of facilities. Uh, if you have a new facility that you're building, I, I suggest this is the guy to get a hold of and, and, and utilize his talents. He's seen millions of facilities, so good with cattle behavior, low-stress cattle handling, veterinary consulting, just somebody within the industry that has a wealth of knowledge and a lot of energy. So <laughs> get him. A lot get of him. energy. A lot of energy. You got to. <laughs> that's right. But we're going to talk today about something that, that you're pretty passionate about, and that's, that's you know, acclimating cattle mm -hmm. and let's start off by because why do we do it? some of the frustrations that you had hey so uh when i first started out in practice um one of our frustrations was we would we'd get new arrival cattle coming into the yards and and these cattle would be you know about three four days on feed and, and we'd start seeing some pretty uh sunken in ribs and 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 flanks and we 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 thought those cattle were sick and so we'd pull those cattle and uh and we treat some of them and then as we kind of uh got going with our auscultation and and the stethoscope we started identifying that those cattle were not sick you know, mm. the lungs were normal and so then it made us go back and look at the dynamics of the pen and really evaluate just the behavior of the new arrivals and what was going on in that pen what we would see is is these new arrivals would come in and it's things that we just we missed uh, previously, but cattle would, would either be bunched in corners, uh, they, they appeared non-settled, they'd be walking around the pen, you know, for three, four days. And uh, in the past, you'd think that, well, that'd be normal because in about day five, seven, it'd fix itself. But, you know, working with Dr. Tom Nofsinger and Bud Williams, they've taught me so much in terms of settling cattle. Um, working just recently with Shane Morrissey from Australia, he came over and showed me even some more ideas of how to settle cattle here, here two weeks ago. And, uh, and it works phenomenally well. It's about spending time with the cattle, though, in that initial five, seven days, some of, sometimes longer, it depends. Yeah. But, uh, you know, 10, 15-minute sessions sometimes, sometimes shorter. But it really, really does help us. And it's probably even something that, you know, we have a lot of cow-calf producers mm -hmm. on the show that'll, that'll be preconditioning. It's mm -hmm. something they can do as that first day of weaning too. Oh yeah, uh, I always say like on the cow calf side is the the interaction the day that calf is born. If you're putting a tag in the ear, 
uh, the separation of the mom and the calf during that time and how you do it is so important. And then every time you handle those, those animals in terms of uh, preconditioning, uh, sorting, weaning, uh, and how you uh, settle those calves and sort and all that stuff makes a big, big difference as far as how those cattle will settle later on. Awesome. Well, this is a good place for us to take a break. Folks, we're going to have a great show today. Thanks for joining us. More with Dr. Kip Luke savage from Production Animal Consultation after these messages. This Prevention Works Minute brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica, Inc. Hey folks, welcome to our Prevention Works Minute. This is an outstanding segment and I'm really glad that we're getting to do this when we talk about preventative medicine for cattle. Biosecurity is important and a good key component to that is vaccination. When we vaccinate an animal, one thing you need to understand is that they do not work immediately. Matter of fact, it takes seven to 14 days before the animal, once it's vaccinated, to actually start having an immune response that produces an antibodies that are specific for a disease in which we would vaccinate them for. So if I vaccinate a calf for IBR, it's seven to 14 days before that animal is protected or has antibody to neutralize IBR virus. Once we get out there to 14 to 21 days, the body has memory cells for IBR. That's why we give them a booster and we get that booster in our tighter response. Vaccines don't work immediately, but they were really good for prevention. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Do your cattle struggle with pink eye, BRD, or another disease? Contact Newport Laboratories for a customized solution. Our custom-made vaccines are produced using the specific diseases found in your area. These USDA licensed vaccines offer potential cost savings on vaccine and labor. Contact your veterinarian or Newport Laboratories the next time your cattle are in need of a custom solution. Newport Laboratories custom-made vaccine because every situation is different. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Kip Luke Savage, and we're talking about acclimating cattle. So Dr. Kip, kind of talk to me about how you start or how do you pick out which okay. pens? So when we first have newly arrived cattle come into the yard, uh, you kind of evaluate what that pen does. When we put them into their home pen or their receiving pen, we kind of look at what are the cattle doing. If some of them are lying down, some of them are standing, some of them are at the water tank, some of them are at the feed bunk, I don't get as uh, uh, aware of those cattle as I would be or concerned of those cattle as I would be is if I come to a pen and they're all bunched in a corner or they're milling around or walking meticulously around the pen and not looking settling. for something. Yes, they're looking they're, for an out. Yeah, they're just, they're not comfortable. And, yeah. yeah, and so then when I see those pins, those are the pins that I, I tell our crew we have to go to. Now, sometimes when we go to that pin, if they all just kind of flush to the back of the pin, um, they're not inviting you in the pen at that point. Right. They're saying, uh, you know, this is a distance and I'd like to get further, but I can't. Yeah. And so uh, you might have to work on the outside of that feed bunk initially. And sometimes if you have square bales, small square bales, that's a perfect time to just go along the bunk and put a little bit of hay in the bunk. You as a person uh, and do that and show them that you're putting that there. That'll give them a little idea that you're okay. Yeah, we talked about it on one of the shows. Uh, the sale barn there at, at Junction City had talked about cattle are getting wilder because, you know, people don't get out of the tractor. They mm -hmm. have fence line bunks. We, you know, b bailed, rolling bales. And, and then we did, when we treat them on pasture, we shoot them with a dart. 
-hmm. then they come in the feed yard and they see this two-legged thing walking around. They're like, what the heck? Yeah, they don't know who we are sometimes. Other yeah. than they know who we are. They know we're a predator. Yeah. They know by our eyes. They know by our actions. And so uh, I always tell people, they already know you're the predator. You have to start communicating with them that you are, you understand them. And so put yourself in position to understand them. This so. is very similar, Dr. Kip, and I, until just now, I didn't. it's very similar to, to breaking a colt. Yes, yes. I was asking a guy the other day, you know, when you, when you first go into a round pen, you know, you, we work in square pens with cattle. Uh, when you go in a round pen with a colt, you think about where do you stand? You stand where you look and appear like you are the leader. You are their, their leader at this point in time. They look for your guidance. They, they crave your guidance. And so put yourself in that position to where you are creating the movement and you always look like you're leading it from the front. Um, the hardest thing with a, a new colt is getting them to face up. They always want to turn their butt to you. Cattle, same way. They don't trust you. They, they want to turn and get away. Yeah. Um, they will face up because they want to see who you are. But uh, getting them to actually face and turn and go with you is a, is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then when you're talking about working from the outside of the pen, I think that's really important, on especially cattle that are really nervous. Yes, absolutely. Cool. It is. Well, we're going to get in that pen here when we come back from these messages with Dr. Kip Lucas Savage. Some call it a come from behind victory an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprevo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprevo. Zuprevo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprevo from Merck Animal Health. Still using ineffective fly tags on your cattle? It's time to eliminate fleas, ticks, flies, lice, and parasites, and at the same time, give them a shiny coat, making them more valuable. One fly tag can cost $2.50, but you can do this all for about a nickel a head. Introducing the Cow Sprayer, designed and built in the U.S. The Cow Sprayer is portable, solar-powered, and comes with a 25 or 40-gallon tank. Eliminate parasites for about $0.05 cents a head with the Cow Sprayer. Cowsprayer.com in the springtime, cattlemen need to be thinking of preventing important diseases like pink eye. Pink eye prevention includes management factors like good fly control, pasture management, along with a good vaccination program. Eyesight from AgriLabs has broad efficacy coverage as its origin from eight different field isolates of Moraxella bovis. It is safe, smooth, highly syringable, safe with young calves and pregnant cows, and provides superior protection against pink eye. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Kip Luke Savage with Production Animal Consultation. We're glad you tuned in. Talking about acclimating cattle. We talked about our frustrations, talked about getting started. Now, Dr. Kip, walk us through what you do when, okay. you're, when you get in the pen and you start working these cattle. So once, once we get in the pen, what I, what I like to do is, if they, if they are bunched in the corner, is your, your job or your task is, is to ask them to leave that corner and go investigate the rest of the pen. And so we will, we will come at them at about a 45 degree angle or so um, to give them two directions to go. What we found with that left eye versus right eye now, though, is, is a lot of times cattle will try to keep you on that left. And so don't be surprised if, if they're over in this this uh, right-hand corner or whatever, that they don't go up this fence line that way. They're going to go back, try to go against the yes, back of the pen. Absolutely. Yep. And so uh, when we do that, I, get, I let them do that, and I always lead the front and try to keep lead with the front. What they'll do, cattle like to come halfway around you, and they always return where they came from. They always return where it's comfortable. And so you have to just let them come back, let them go through the process again, put a little bit of pressure on them again, uh, low stress cattle handling is about putting some pressure on sometimes mm -hmm. and and we let them keep doing it as they do that they'll keep coming they'll just keep making their way up towards the bunk we typically don't pressure towards the bunk we always pressure away from it but we have let them go and investigate the other corners of the pen and when, when they get to a new corner 
uh, or a new part of the pin, we just back our pressure off and we let them settle in that area and then let them be and then when they start to face back up and they're looking for more guidance, then we ask them to move again. And you, you, do, you spend about 15, 20 minutes sometimes doing that. Sometimes it's less. It depends on the pin of cattle. But what I would always tell people is, is on new pins of cattle, those are the ones that require our time. We need to spend more time in those cattle. If we want them to stay healthy uh, and stay, stay free of disease and so forth, you have to allow their immune system to work and fight disease off. All these things have been exposed to, to stuff from the sale yards or, or from wherever they're coming from. You gotta let their immune system work. Stress will keep that from working. Acclimation will allow them to lessen that stress and get them back up on feed and water a lot quicker. They can fight disease themselves. It makes it better. Well, it just it goes back to that analogy with the colt. They they learn to trust you. Mm -hmm. They learn to to that you're okay. That you're there to help them. You're there to give them guidance. Now it's okay to come up to the bunk. It's okay to go to the water tank. I'm getting more familiar with my surroundings, mm -hmm. and and that just speeds up the process. Cause you and I both know that that we see those calves just like you're talking about earlier. We go out there. We pull these calves that are that are gant. Mm -hmm. They're not always sick. Sometimes right. they just haven't eaten. Sometimes they haven't drank. Yeah. So teach them where those things are at. Teach them that you can guide them to those areas of the pen. And what makes it nice is when you do have to pull one, you have shown the pen that you can take them anywhere in that pen and it's okay. So it's all about training your animals. It's about training them to lead. It's about training them to lead actually in the pen. Yep. And that's and, important. Yeah, so when you're pulling them or if you're taking them for reimplant or gathering them to ship, you've already gone through the exercise to... Yes. And I'm really glad we changed it to acclimation rather than the word exercise because people picture treadmills and... Yes, yes, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Thanks, I agree. Man. Well, let's take another break. When we come back, we'll do a wrap-up with Dr. Kip from Production Animal Consultation. You're watching Doc Talk. We're glad you joined us. We'll see you here after these messages. Did you know long-range planning through the checkoff can help keep your business profitable? To successfully pass on cattle operations from one generation to the next, it's important to promote beef and keep farms and ranches profitable. Your beef checkoff helps do that. I'm Jeff Mingus. I'm from Southeast Arizona where we have a family cattle ranch. I've been in the cattle business my entire life. I can remember the onset of the checkoff program and when the Beef Council decided to use checkoff dollars to create additional demand for the chuck and the round. And I think that created a significant increase in the price of our product and I think the beef checkoff has been beneficial for our operation. So we moved to an area on a national backcountry byway and because of that there's a lot of tourists and they'll stop in sometimes and we've had a lot of people come out to the ranch so we take that as a real opportunity to educate people about the beef industry. So we built this catering business when I retired a few years ago. I've used beef checkoff recipes over the um, last 20 years but when you're really producing that for the public it takes on a whole new meaning. As a young rancher there was a lot for me to learn when I came back to the ranch. I feel as if the beef checkoff gave me additional tools I needed. The beef quality assurance program has helped teach me how to handle cattle in a more effective manner, a way that's the most beneficial to the cow and the most efficient for the producer. And I'm really proud to be able to say that, that the beef industry is reaching out to the consumer. I have this one on my website, Gazpacho Steak Salad. It's very popular. And this is, this is one that millennials like because it's quick, it's fast, and they don't have a lot of time to prepare. And this one has been really popular with men because you ask them, are you, do you like to grill? And of course they say yes and say, well, here's, here's just a couple of recipes. And they grab them. We feel really blessed that we have one of our sons, Ben, wanting to carry on the ranching tradition. So he'll be a fifth generation cattle rancher in my family. It takes vision, dedication, hard work. It takes knowing who you can trust 
At Zinpro Corporation, we have more industry-endorsed research behind our trace minerals than any other company. Proof that our patented performance minerals help improve overall animal health and performance. Lots of companies make claims. At Zinpro, we generate results. Still using ineffective fly tags on your cattle? It's time to eliminate fleas, ticks, flies, lice, and parasites, and at the same time, give them a shiny coat, making them more valuable. One fly tag can cost $250, but you can do this all for about a nickel a head. Introducing the Cow Sprayer, designed and built in the U.S. The Cow Sprayer is portable, solar-powered, and comes with a 25- or 40-gallon tank. Eliminate parasites for about five cents a head with the Cow Sprayer. Cowsprayer.com it's easy to spot the man who uses Synanthic. With lower volume and less waste, Synanthic steps up your deworming routine. Get more deworming with less dewormer at Synanthic.com. Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica Inc. knows the importance of beef quality assurance and asks you to step up and get certified. Go to bqa.org for details. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Kip Lucas Savage, who is a veterinarian with Production Animal Consultation. He does everything from, from design of facilities, uh, helping you pick out the different equipment that you need, uh, pins, anything feedlot, anything cow-calf, pretty much anything beef, uh, Dr. Kip has done and is, does a great job of consulting. So if you're looking for a consultant, this is a great person to, to give a buzz to. Um, Dr. Kip, we talked about acclimating cattle. Let's just go back and just kind of talk about what you're recommending to people from the time we get cattle off the truck until processing. What are some things that you tell people to kind of so, do and look for? Uh, first and foremost is Let's, let's make sure these cattle come into our yard and, and when they do, uh, we create a five-star environment. Um, it, this is a resort. Uh, this is the resort I live in every day. Um, so when, we, when cattle come off that truck, there's somebody there to greet the cattle right when they come off. We gotta count them anyway, so somebody should be in their presence and greet them. Lead them to the pen of where we want them to go. Uh, have someone in front and someone coming behind and leading those cattle to where we need them to go. If you don't have that luxury, then at least greet them cattle and start uh, from the very beginning of, of asking them to take, you know, go down the alley uh, and be the gatekeeper and then follow them up to their pen. Uh, once they're in that pen, uh, give them a couple hours to just kind of get the, the kind of their bearings straight and, and that they're in a new environment and then uh, come back and visit them again see what they're doing. If, like I said, if they're kind of uh, let some laying down, some standing up, some drinking, some eating, I'd say we're probably okay, but it still does not hurt to go in there and just get things up and ask them, you know, show them that you're there. Um, maybe teach them one or two things, part of the acclimation process. Yep. Teach them to lead again. All of that's gonna help you. If you can teach them the single file or double file by you in that pen along the fence line, all that's gonna set all that up for processing. Because when we get them to the processing tubs and the alleys, it's exactly what we want them to do again. We want them to come around us as a single file and lead and go straight. So it's all about preparation. And then every day after that, once we process those cattle, uh, every day when you're in the pen, I, I really love for guys not to think of themselves as just pen riders and finding sick cattle. You are trainers, you're trainers every day of, those, of that pen. Train your cattle to move. Train them to be responsive. Train them to have respect for the handler. Uh, you are their leader, so just teach them to move every day a little bit. They only have to take two, three steps or five steps. It's okay. But you do those things, it makes it so much easier to get the pin out. 
because when you come to the pen, they look at you for your guidance, and they they go, oh man, Dr. Dan's here today, I gotta get up and do something again. Yep. Well, and, and then just talk about increasing the value of your preconditioned calves. Those calves that come in, eat, drink, lay down, they start gaining those weight. Those are the ones right I want to buy next year. Yeah, absolutely. And and guys that do this on the ranch, I mean, it's it's all the all the concepts are the same. Uh, when we get cattle like that off the ranch that have been handled like that, it makes it so much easier to handle them when they get to the yard because they're already used to what's going on. Well. Thanks for being on the show. Oh, absolutely, thank you. Outstanding guest, as always, Dr. Kip Lucas Savage. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian, and if you want to find out more about what we do on Doc Talk, you can find us at www.doctalktv.com. Thanks for watching today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson with Dr. Kip Lucas Savage, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.